audit of a leasing company. Shall I start? Now, suppose if this question comes in exam, leasing company. What do you mean by leasing? Any idea? Right to? Right to use someone's asset, okay? It's called as leasing. Achha, what could be the alternative of leasing? Suppose if I don't want to enter into a leasing decision, Buying the asset, very good. So can I say buying means nothing but capital budgeting? Viewing for the first time. Buying means to invest money in an asset. Okay, it is called as capital budgeting. You'll study this in FM, financial management. You have a chapter on this. I don't know whether you know it or not. Not yet started, but you will study. That is what I'm saying. So either you hire an asset or you buy an asset. So, see, there are some people, now understand an important concept. There are some people who are preferring not to buy but to hire. Hire means you have to pay rent. Okay, no one is going to give you free of cost, you have to pay rent for that. Hire means there is cash outflow. Hire means there is, sorry, buy means there is cash outflows. And hire means to pay what? Rent. Please understand this point. Now when I am saying leasing, leasing is just opposite of capital budgeting. Suppose if the cost of an asset is 100 crore rupees and the person needs that asset for 5 years. He thinks that I should, if I spend 100 crore rupees and just use the asset for 5 years, after this the machine, say the machine is going to be used for some construction work, civil construction work. And if I buy an asset for 100 crore rupees just for 5 years, instead of that, let me find a person who is going to give me this asset on a rented out basis for 5 years and say 5 year rentals will not be more than 1 crore rupees. 2 crore rupees rent per, per annum. So uh, say 220 lakh rupees rent per annum. So 1 crore rupees is the 5 year rent. So now you tell me if you after 5 years as such you are going to discard the asset rather than wasting 100 crore. This is a waste of money. Instead of that, what a CA should advise to his client, go for a renting out. Pay 20 lakh rupees rent per annum. So maximum for 5 years, you will end up paying 1 crore rupees. Of course, in the computation of rent, there is a lot of discounting, etc. I don't know whether you know about the discounting factor. Are you no know discounting? Time value of money. Lot of things are involved, but I am just giving you a very simple example that if you are buying an asset and look at the cost of the asset, rather than that, it would be advisable to hire the asset okay so what do you mean by leasing leasing is nothing but you have to hire an asset and make payment of rentals do you know that in a lease since i told you lease is nothing but it is like a financial decision taken by a person it's a financial decision everything deals in money only in case of leasing so now instead of capital budgeting i'm hiring the asset there are two parties in this transaction one is the lesser and one is the Lassi nahi, lassi. Okay, first party is the lesser, second one is a lessee. So now, lesser and lessee, this lesser is going to give the machine to the lessee and lessee in general will give him what? Rentals. And all this will be under a deed, lease deed. Okay, and again this lease deed is also a registered lease deed. It has to be registered and you, in fact you have to pay stamp duty also on this. I don't know whether you know this point that now government is going to hike the stamp duties also on all transactions. Lease is also covered in that. So now stamp duty, whatever is this and stamp duty is as per the state government, not as per central government. Every state will have a different stamp duty. So as per the stamp act, whatever is the stamp duty of your state in which you are entering in the transaction, that stamp duty you have to pay, get a lease deed done and then that people can enter into a transaction. Lease is generally not a short term transaction, it is a long term in nature. Lease is a long term transaction. Generally any tenure of lease will be between 3 to 10 years. Easily. This is long term period. Now when I am talking about lease, if you are verifying this deed, see just like partnership you have to verify partnership deed. Similarly for lease what you have to verify lease deed, simple. Okay, what should be the contents of lease deed which an auditor should see? First thing you should see, the difference between who is a lesser and who is a lessee. Very important. 
and let me tell you that since we are discussing audit of a leasing company this leasing company means I'm talking about lesser not of the lessee we are not discussing audit of a lessee here we are discussing audit of the lesser who's a leasing company the business of such company is to give the assets on lease and generate revenue in the form of lease rentals so clear distinction should be made who is the lesser and who is the lessee I will also like to tell you one more point here that when lessee gets the asset he will use the asset he will use the asset though the ownership will always remain with the lesser only so if he is a user of the asset does not means that he can sublet the asset you know what is subletting again giving it to someone else on a lease basis how can he do that so agreement should clearly define who is the lesser and who is the lessee and lessee has just the right to use the asset and not to sublet the asset you know if I tell you something about accounting standard 19 which is actually a standard on leases only IPCC it is not applicable but you should know some contents and you should write an exam see various points from various different you know acts we can write this standard says that there are two type of leases in India one is operating lease and one is financing lease one is operating lease and one is financing lease Operating lease means what and what is the meaning of the term financing lease? I'll draw a diagram to explain you this point Suppose if I'm saying OL operating lease, this is not operating leverage this is operating lease If I'm saying operating lease, it means that when the lesser gives the asset to the lessee to use it The risk of the asset suppose if lessee causes some damage to the asset the risk of the assets and if suppose there is some returns on the asset is with the lesser not with the lessee but in case of you look at the diagram first financing lease what happens if the lesser gives the asset to the lessee the risk of the asset as well as the rewards of the asset or returns of the asset is born to the lessee not to the lesser sir how please explain how now how it is in operating lease concept says that whenever lesser has given the asset to the lessee other than using the asset or the user of the asset, lessee has no charge over the asset. Very good point I want to tell you that in case of operating lease, it is the lesser who will charge depreciation also on the asset. But in case of financing lease, it is the lessee who charges depreciation. Sir, how it is possible lessee is the user, how can he charge depreciation? Because depreciation is always charged by the owner of the asset. You know, finance lease works on the concept of deemed ownership. Finance lease works on the concept of deemed ownership. Deemed ownership means what? Since the lessee is using the asset for a substantial period of time, it is as good as the lessee being the owner of the asset. Look at the substance over form. You know, there's something called a substance over form. You are living in a house, which is a rented house. But you are the person who is living in this house for one year, second year, third year. You, paint, you got the house painted at your own cost. The neighbors are watching you that every day you are the person who is ringing the doorbell. You go inside, you brought in TV, you brought in furniture. After five, seven years, many people in India, what they claim, you know, this is my house. And the person who is the actual owner, he is now afraid what to do. And you know, there is no law in India which says that if a person claims to be his house, you can do something. There is no law. You just you can go and file a case against that person and then Indian judiciary system 10 years 20 years it will take okay so it's very because substance over form law always sees substance over. if a person got the house painted he's living from past six to seven years in the house he every day the neighbors watch him oh you are the person the the perception will be that only in mind that oh this person is the owner of the house though he may be just a lessee in the house have you understood or not so that deemed ownership concept gets applied to finance lease that is why in India, if I am talking about finance lease, this finance lease is nothing but suppose if lessee causes some loss to the asset, he damages the asset, the expenses will be borne by the lessee. Because it is deemed owner, now, since you are deemed owner, you only bear the expense now. Now if he gets some returns from the asset, sir, what type of returns he can get? Suppose the lesser gave him a machine to use, suppose this is the machine. Lessee wanted this machine to produce goods and he wanted to make 1000 units per annum. He wanted to produce 1000 units per annum. Somehow the asset was so efficient that lessee could produce 1200 units per annum. If it was operating lease, you know what would the lesser tell him? This 200 units profit you share with me also. 
but he can't say this if it's a finance lease. So extra profit which lessee earns on this 200 units is to be kept by lessee only. Because the agreement, how will the auditor come to know this? The deed will specify whether it is finance lease or operating lease. Have you understood or not? And the same I have told you about depreciation aspect also. Who's going to charge depreciation under what? So when an auditor sees the lease deed, he should always see who is the lesser, who is the lessee, who is having the right to sublet the asset and compliance of AS19, which is a very important point. See, for lessee, for lessee in finance deed example, he is not only charging depreciation, he is also paying rent. And both are allowable expenditures for him. He can save tax on both these expenditures. Depreciation is also an expenditure for him. Rent is also an expenditure for him. Have you understood or not? And in both the cases, rent is always an income for the lesser. That you have to remember. Next point which I wanted to say about lease is that when we are talking about lease, you should always see what is the date of commencement of the transaction. Where, see, ultimately you are the auditor of the leasing company who is the lesser. So you have to see when did the transaction commenced. Because transaction will commence based on that the leasing company is going to get rents also. Now rents can be paid on a monthly basis. Monthly basis. Rents can be on a quarterly basis. Or it can be on a half yearly basis or sometimes even per annum basis. Depends. So you have to always see when did the transaction commence. Suppose if it's a three year lease, then after three years, what is the date on which the transaction is going to get completed? So start date and end date should be always seen by an auditor. Computation of rentals. So rentals will be in two form. One will be the amount of rentals which you have to verify whether it is computed properly or not. And one will be the number of rentals. That means how many rents you will get in a year. Two times you will get half yearly basis. Four times you will get quarterly basis. Twelve times you will get yearly basis. It depends. Monthly basis. So all this need to be verified by an auditor, date of commencement and date of end of the transaction. You know a very good point which I want to say about the leasing companies. You have to always see the memorandum of association of the leasing company as well as the articles of association. Now you will say sir why is that so? In fact this is a general point. I will make you write this point in all the audits. But then I am particularly writing it in special category here. There is a reason. In the memorandum, it is clearly written what is the nature of the business, nature of business, object of the business, main clause. So now suppose if the main business is to let out machines, the leasing company cannot let out furniture. Are you understanding or not? So if the, though furniture may be kept in the factory, it is just lying like this. But did the memorandum permit you to let out furniture? So if the memorandum does not permit, you can't let out furniture. That means the auditor should see whether the business is done as per the main clause of memorandum or not. So if the business is to let out machine, you can let out only machine, not furniture. So if this asset is let out, then you have to ask the company, why are you letting out this? Tomorrow if something goes wrong and if the lessee runs away with the furniture, I can't do anything for you then. Law will not be helping you because there is no business written here. So then in that case, there is a risk involved to the, I have to safeguard the interest of my client. Okay, as a leasing company, I have to safeguard the interest of my client. One more thing which I want to say here about the leasing companies, whenever we are doing audits of leasing companies, we should always see to it that these leasing companies, see there are at times what happens, terms and conditions are not clearly written in the lease, uh, who is using the asset, who is paying money, nothing is written. So normally what happens, when it comes to the lessee, he may run away with the asset also. Lessee may run away with the asset also, it happens. So if the asset is given on lease, is the insurance cover taken for that asset or not? Very important point. I don't know whether you have done higher purchase topic in accounts. Yes, in higher purchase, there is something called as HP debtors concept. Higher purchase debtors. You know, if a person is yet to give me the, the amount of installment, in higher purchase, we say it is installment. So it's installment means principal plus interest portion. And higher purchase price means down payment plus installment. So when I say in case of lease, what happens if he runs away with the asset, have I made some provision for bad debts arising out of it or not? This also should be verified by an auditor because there are cases like this which come. Lessee may run away with the asset, insurance is not taken for the asset and then the leasing company has to bear the loss. What did I say just now? I have to safeguard the interest of my client. So you have to see all the terms and conditions in the lease deed which are in favor of your client and I don't mean that they are against the lessee. But they should not affect the interest of your client. Have you understood or not? These are all the points which you have to write and then general points anyways I will dictate you. Is it clear? Shall we write on all these points? So give the heading audit of a leasing company.
first point. Lease is an alternative. Lease is an alternative. Is an alternative for capital budgeting. For capital budgeting. Full stop. In case of capital budgeting. In case of capital budgeting, the person, the person enters into a buying decision, enters into a buying decision. Whereas in case of leasing, whereas in case of leasing, an asset is hired. An asset is hired. Full stop. Next point. A lease may save. Lease may save. Cost of the lessee. Cost of the lessee when it is compared with cash outflows when it is compared with cash outflows in case of capital budgeting in case of capital budgeting Full stop. Next point. An auditor should verify. Auditor should verify. Lease deed. Lease deed. Which should be registered. Lease deed. Which should be registered with. Registered with. The state authority, the state authority, by paying appropriate stamp duty, by paying appropriate stamp duty. Full stop. Next point. As per accounting standard 19, as per AS 19, there are two forms of leases. There are two forms of leases. Operating lease. Operating lease. And financing lease. Operating lease and Financing lease. Full stop. Next point. In case of operating lease, in case of operating lease, the risk and rewards, the risk and rewards relating to an asset risk and rewards relating to an asset are of the lesser are of the lesser who will also charge depreciation on the asset who will also charge depreciation on the asset Next point. Full stop. Next point. In case of financing lease, in case of finance or financing lease, 
the risk and rewards the risk and rewards relating to an asset risk and rewards relating to an asset are of the lessee who will also charge depreciation who will also charge depreciation on the asset Next point. In any lease transaction, in any lease transaction in India, any lease transaction in India, there are two parties. There are two parties. The lesser and the lessee. The lesser and the lessee where the lesser is the owner of the asset where the lesser is the owner of the asset and the lessee and the lessee is the user But in case of finance lease, but in case of finance lease, the lessee is considered, the lessee is considered as the deemed owner of the asset. Lessee is considered as the deemed owner of the asset into bracket write down substance over form this is a concept of substance over form next point from the lease deed from the lease deed An auditor should verify from the lease deed, an auditor should verify the date of commencement, the date of commencement as well as the date of closure of transaction, the date of commencement as well as the date of closure of transaction date of closure of transaction full stop this will enable continue this will enable the leasing company this will enable the leasing company to compute to compute lease rentals to compute lease rentals and an auditor can trace and an auditor can trace the number of lease rentals auditor can trace the number of lease rentals and the amount of lease rentals number of lease rentals and the amount of lease rentals full stop next point an auditor should verify auditor should verify copy of memorandum copy of memorandum and articles moa aoa 
memorandum and articles to find out the exact nature of business to find out the exact nature of business and to find out the type of assets to find out the type of assets which can be given type of assets which can be given on a lease full stop he must ensure continue he must ensure that only such assets he must ensure that only such assets can be given only such assets can be given on lease can be given on lease next point there is a possibility there is a possibility that the lessee may lessee may default may default on the payment of lease rental lessee may default on the payment of lease rental full stop in such cases in such cases an auditor should in such cases an auditor should ensure that auditor should ensure that adequate provision adequate provision is made adequate provision is made for the bad debts for the bad debts which may arise due to bad debts which may arise due to a default due to a default on lease rentals on lease rentals full stop also also adequate insurance cover adequate insurance cover should be obtained since the lessee may since the lessee may not turn back with the asset lessee may not turn back with the asset full stop